Tonight's message is from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verses 14 and 15. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. How then shall they call on him on whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. May God bless the hearing and reading of his blessed word. Uh, we finished our last message with verse 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so we have a wonderful promise here of salvation, that if you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior, that you shall be saved. And so believing in the heart and confessing with the mouth are, that are two things that go together in faith, the biblical faith. So there has to be corresponding action without which you, uh, it, it does not constitute true faith. And tonight we go into the Christian imperative. Um, why have I titled this the Christian imperative? It's because this is what Jesus commissioned every Christian to do. Now, not every Christian is called to be an apostle. Not every Christian is called to be a pastor. Not every Christian is called to the same thing, but there is a general calling, a general commissioning on every Christian, which is to go and make disciples of all nations. And Jesus made it very clear in Matthew chapter 28, where he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to do all that I have taught you, commanded you. And I will be with you even to the end of this age. And so the Lord has commissioned every Christian, every follower of Jesus Christ, every believer to make disciples of all nations. Now, how can you do it um, at your level? Um, if we say that you know, everybody is not sent out as a missionary, um, then how is every Christian supposed to be uh, someone that carries out the commission of Jesus Christ? It's very simple. Start with the family, the, very, uh, the, the immediate family in which you live. And beloved, when you begin with that family, you begin to preach the gospel in that family through not just your words, but also through your lives. And so when we begin to preach the gospel, witnessing to Jesus Christ, wherever we are in our families, we are carrying out this great Christian imperative, the great commission of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it starts with a question. It's a rhetorical question. The answer to which is obvious. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? So you cannot call on someone unless you have believed in them. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And therefore, it is the responsibility of every born-again Christian to go and preach the gospel, the true, undiluted, uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ. And we must carry this gospel to every nation, to every place that the Lord sends us, whether you're traveling, whether you are with your friends in an institute, whether you are a student, a mother, a father, uh, whatever vocation you might have, whatever place you might have in life and in society, God has given each Christian, everyone from the youngest to the oldest, the responsibility to go and tell. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? So unless we share the gospel with the unbeliever, how can they believe? It's impossible. And therefore, we are given the God-given mandate to go and preach the gospel to everyone, whether they believe or not. Now, that is up to God. And we as Christians are not responsible for the fact 
uh, of whether people receive the gospel or not. That is not your responsibility. That is not my responsibility. Because, again, it says, have they all believed? And we'll come to that uh, portion as well. Because not everyone that even the apostles preached to believed in the gospel. Now, does that mean that they were failures as far as witnessing to Christ was concerned? Absolutely not. Because we are given the responsibility to go and share. It is up to the Lord to bring them near to him. Because Jesus made it very clear. He said, unless my father draws somebody to me, no one can come to me. And that's in John. And that's why unless the father draws a person to Jesus Christ, that person cannot come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is ultimately the sovereign will of God, because God looks at the heart of men, while men look at the outward appearance. In Second Samuel, in First Samuel, I'm sorry, verse uh, chapter 16, um, the Lord had sent Samuel to anoint one of the sons of Jesse. He had not revealed to him which son. And so Samuel goes to Bethlehem where Jesse lived, and goes to the house of Jesse with sacrifice. And uh, Jesse lines up his sons, okay, except for David. All his older brothers are there. And when Samuel looks at the eldest, he says in his heart, this must be sure, sh this surely must be the king of Israel. And he, you know, attempts to anoint him. And the Lord says, no, I do not want that man. Do we realize that there are some people that God rejects? Yes, absolutely. And we see it throughout the Bible. Now, what is God's criteria? And then the Lord continues and says to Samuel, men look at the outward appearance, but I look at the heart. Hallelujah. The Lord looks at the heart of men. Beloved, if our heart is right with him, we will come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And therefore, it is not your responsibility to determine which person comes to Christ and which doesn't. It is our responsibility to go and share, to tell them. And once you tell them, you have obeyed the Lord and you are exempt of your responsibility of that person. Now, let me just be very specific regarding this because it doesn't mean you go, start going out wherever you go out, you start just preaching and witnessing to every other person that you come across the street or you know the train or wherever you're going. No. Even in that, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit because Romans chapter 8, verse 14 makes it very clear. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, the same are the children of God. And so those who are led by the Spirit of God, even in witnessing, we have to be led by him. We have to be led by the Lord. And when the Lord expressly tells you to uh, share the gospel with a person, it is your responsibility to share it with him or her, whatever the case may be. And it is up to the Lord to win them over to his kingdom. Beloved, you and I have a responsibility and that is to share this gospel with everyone that the Lord leads us to share it with. It doesn't matter who that person is. It doesn't matter what background they come from. Because God loves every human being. And he wants everybody to be saved. As it makes clear in 2 Timothy. Where it says, God would, it's the will of God that everybody come to a knowledge of the truth and be saved. But we know that everybody is not going to be saved because Jesus makes it clear in, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14, where he says, uh, enter through the narrow way. Because wide is the gate, uh, you know, way to destruction and many that go down that path. And there are few that find the path of life because narrow is the gate to life. Beloved, we know that God has given us a responsibility. And with the love of Jesus Christ, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, let us be witnesses to everyone that the Lord leads us to witness. May God bless the sharing of his word.